Hey students, Pastor Eric, I want to let you know I'm excited to hear that small groups are going so well. Thanks to each and every one of you who've made the commitment to be there and help that grow during this time. I want to encourage our entire student ministry, continue to do your daily devotions with the Lord. You've got to have that quality one-on-one -on -one time with Him. Here's the deal. God's called you all to be difference makers. So when we do these small things, it helps prepare us for that moment when we get to make a positive impact on someone else's life. Good afternoon, church family. Uh, good morning, excuse me. It is so good to see you. I hope and pray that you're doing well and uh, that you and your family are uh, abiding in the Lord and things are going good. Continue to pray for those that we know of in our church family who are experiencing difficulties and setbacks. Uh, most of them are doing better, but we continue to pray for them and ask God to, to certainly bless them as we do you as well. So just know again that we love you and that we're praying for you. Hey, going forward, we're going to change the format just a little bit. Most of our announcements and prayer requests would be done at a different time earlier in the countdown and things of that, that, that nature, especially our prayer requests. We'll be doing most of those on Wednesday night, sharing as much as we can and as much as we know. But uh, still, still doing those things we feel like need to be heard by the whole church family. But we'll try to save some of this airtime for preaching and uh I can always use a little more time. And all the church said, yeah, not too loud. Hey, just, just real quick like uh, this week, and then again, we're probably changing this in the weeks ahead. Bobby and Beth Clemens, Joan Hammond, David and Lisa Hamlin, uh, Jim and Katie Linville, Keith Owens and his family, and talk to Pastor Keith. He's doing much better, uh, Lord willing. And if he continues to do better, he'll be back uh, at work on Monday. And so, Pastor Keith, we love you. Pray the Lord give you strength and bless you. Elena Pettis. Rick and Amy Ritchie, Doris Tunnel, and uh, we, we just continue to ask God to bless these people and uh, to be with them, okay? And so the Lord watch over them and take care of them, all right? Hey, just two prayer concerns, Bobby and Beth Clemens. Last week, we didn't, uh, when we recorded this, Bobby's mother hadn't passed away. She has. They had the funeral Monday, so please pray for Bobby and Beth's family and ask the Lord to be with them. And also Jenny Nichols, her grandfather, Harold Redden, passed away so please pray for them and ask the lord to be with them we're still uh, reevaluating regularly what we need to be doing and when will be a good time <clears throat> to restart our campus uh, presence with you being here and so uh, pray for our leaders that they'll certainly do that and, and god will give them grace to do that okay so you you just pray about that and ask the lord to lead and guide there hey as we're getting ready if you have your bible romans 13 uh, we're going to switch gears just a little bit this morning with the national election coming up with the president we're going to preach on this morning. Wake up America. I've got some things I want to share from my heart. Not divisive, but something of unity from a spiritual nature that God would pull us together and would certainly have a commonality, uh, common ground to stand on as we get ready to face um, this, this political situation that we're living in today. I remind you, we still need your faithful financial support thank you for giving ever how you choose to do that online through banking uh man bring it by the church thank you for your faithfulness to give as you mail it in uh, we appreciate your tithes and offerings as we continue to try to do regular ministry and we want to do that hey also from week to week you'll hear from different staff members and uh, try to stay connected and then we hope uh, if we're still separated that we even like to bring some of our deacons in to have prayer for us so that, that you stay connected. You know how it is to see a face and uh, you know what I mean, just to stay connected and, and know that everybody 
uh, is praying for you and asking God to bless, okay? So some changes coming up. Appreciate again your faithfulness. Hey, with everything going on in our country today, there are two words that seem to come my way. And, and these are the two words that I hear a lot, especially in relationship to all the political uh, sayings and innuendos and struggles. Number one, people are very frustrated. Who's right? Who is wrong? What should I do? What should I not do? There are a lot of frustrated people who listen to news outlets and they get so much information that they're not sure what they should do, especially in a political climate like we live in today where people are so polarized and people are so vocal and outspoken about what they believe and how we should act. Here's another one. I'm fearful. Pastors, I look around, I see a world that has not only gone crazy, but our world has gotten scary. What should I as a Christian do in a very frustrated, very fearful world today? Well, I'm so glad. Don't you listen? I'm so glad that our Bible speaks to these issues. When Paul wrote Romans chapter 13, if you're there, uh, it was a very different world in which we live in today. There was no democracy. There was no voting. There was no representation. I remind you that we're not a democracy. We're a republic. We vote on those people who go to Washington to represent us. Then it turns into a democracy. They vote on behalf of us, but we're really a republic. One nation under God, indivisible, with all the freedoms and all the blessings that God gives us, we are dictated by representation, are led by representation. So we need to pray for those men and women who make up those different parts of our political process, whether the Senate, the Congress, House of Representatives, whether it be the President of the United States. And so in this country of ours, Paul, not like us, lived in such a different bad time that you and I have so much to be thankful for. We have freedoms that Paul never understood, that Paul never enjoyed in some ways. And so as a result of that today, I just want to preach on America, wake up. I remember an old uh, cartoon or an old commercial that said, that baby, we've come a long way. And then the next phrase said, but baby, we've come a long way in the wrong way. Could it be that we're headed in the wrong direction. Man, we, we need to hear and heed what God has to say. Hey, this message is not new. I typically around this time, uh, especially with a national election like this, I typically share something along these lines. And so I'll do that again today. And I don't apologize for that because I think it's pertinent. It's important. Uh, it's very relevant to the times in which we find ourselves in and in the situations that we are facing today. So let's read the Word of God together. We're going to study for a little bit what it means to be a Christian, a Christian citizen. Now, don't you listen very carefully. I'm an American by birth, and I thank God that I was born here. But I got saved, and when I became saved, I became a Christian. Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 says, Our citizenship is in heaven. So I want you to know when I got saved, my heart and my allegiance now belong to God first, and everything else is under that. So as I love being an American. I love being a part of who we are as a republic, as a democracy. At the end of the day, I'm a Christian. I'm a child of God. I'm born again. And so therefore the Bible, Scripture, and the Holy Spirit dictate what I do and what I do not do. What I practice and what I do not practice. Now, do we always get that perfect? Absolutely not. Has America ever been perfect? No. I hear people so often say, hey, I've, I've missed the good old days. Even the good old days, it wasn't perfect. It may have been better in some respects, but it's never been perfect, nor will it ever be. So our citizenship is in heaven. So the first flag that I fly is the Christian flag. That's where I have my allegiance. And everything else comes under that, whether it's my family, whether it's my country, whatever it may be. So Paul's going to speak to this issue in the book of Romans in the 13th chapter. And it's going to be very plain. And so we'll be very honest today. And I just want to help you. I'm not here to divide. I'm not here to cause... Uh, in any type of schism or division, but I am here to inform and instruct you in righteousness as the Bible says the man of God should do. Listen carefully to Paul speaking about government, countries, and citizenship. Listen to what he said. Romans 13 verse 1. Let every soul, every soul, be subject to the governing authorities. Even though Paul didn't agree with the much of what they did, he still said ultimately... They have been put here by God. For there is no authority. This is a strong word, church. There's no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Wow. It's 
pretty clear in it. You may have voted. But ultimately what he's saying here is God allows it to happen or God uh, negates it. God can cause a king to rise and God can cause a king to fall. I don't care if it's the United States. I don't care if it's Egypt. I don't care if it's Babylon. I don't care if it's Rome. Ultimately, he is the high, holy king of the universe. Therefore, whoever resists the authorities resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you not want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. That's a strong word. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore you must be subject not only because of wrath, but also for conscience sake. That's where you and I find ourselves today in this very frustrated, fearful time. Our conscience. Because you see, we've been born from above. The Spirit of God resigns in our life, rules and reigns in our life, and as a result of that, everything we do is filtered through Scripture and through the Spirit and through the Savior whom we love and serve and follow. And so therefore, sometimes the world looks at us that we're odd or we're weird because they're saying, hey, this sounds good and it would be good, but yet at the end of the day, it doesn't match up with Scripture. By the way, the same person who wrote this, Paul, rejected some of the authority, some of the ordinances of men, John and Peter said, is it better to serve God or serve man? They resisted the governing authorities when it contradicted their scriptural or their spiritual convictions. And there are times I face the same dilemma. I love America. I love red, white, and blue. I pledge allegiance. I get tearful. I don't mind telling you that. But at the same time, at the end of the day, when God's word speaks about a matter and or a subject, then that overrules anything the president, the Supreme Court, Congress, Senate, or the House of Representatives may have to say, God bless America, but America better wake up. And then he says, therefore, render to Caesar the things that are Caesar's, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Again, I remind you that the same guy who wrote that because of his convictions biblically ran afoul of the law in which he lived that day. Because he knew that his heart belonged to God. And as a result of that, his conviction sometimes ran against the political powers of that particular day. Hey, I, I said it a moment ago. Let me read it for you. Philippians 3.20. I'll make reference to this many times. For our citizenship, Philippians 3.20, is in heaven. From which also eagerly we wait for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. America, wake uh, we better heed, we better hear what the Spirit is saying to us today. Hey, I just got uh, three main thoughts that I want to give you under there. There's several things that I want to uh, just hopefully help you with, give you maybe some spiritual insight, maybe not, but at the same time, we need to hear the Word. So Paul, writing to the Christians at Rome and then to the Christians at Philippi, said, remember this, God has placed governing authorities there for a reason. Ultimately, they were put there for good, not for bad. But even authorities in the world can run afoul. They can miss God. They can go contrary to the things of God. John the Baptist ran into trouble with the law. Isaiah ran into trouble with the law. I could go on and on. Moses, Abraham, all of them seem at one point or another in their life to have a problem. Not because of disobedience. Not because they were rebellious. Not because they were a criminal, but because... Of conscience sake, their convictions would not allow them to go along with what's going on. And I, can I be honest? There's some things going on today. My conscience, because of Scripture, will not allow me to say amen. And that's why I said, hey, we better wake up as America. I was very saddened. That one of the political parties this year, they said the ple Pledge of Allegiance to America, but they would not say under God. Wow, Really? We watched in horror with broken hearts in some of the Northwest states who burned Bibles publicly as people clapped and cheered. Wow, America, wake up. We're headed into some very dark, dangerous days as Christians if we believe the Bible. And by the way, if we believe the Bible, it does make all the difference in the world. So as a Christian pastor, what, what am I to do when I'm very frustrated? 
I'm very fearful, but I'm reminded that as a Christian, Paul, many other New Testament saints, even Jesus himself said, we should try to render to Caesar those things that belong to Caesar. So let me just give you three major words and then we'll fill in the blanks. Number one, as a Christian citizen of America, I need to stay informed. And in less than two months, there's two ideologies, two ways of life, two political parties, and two very different sets of views that would be voted on nationally for our country. Today, I don't necessarily look at a party near as much as I do at the policies that that party represents. I, I don't know exactly what. I would be an independent or libertarian. I, I'm, I'm not good at all those things. Uh, typically, somebody say I vote Republican. Not, not telling you to. I'm just telling you that it's difficult in this very frustrating time. What, what do you do when you hear all of this information and you don't know what to do? You don't know who to believe. Well, as a Christian, ultimately, our allegiance is to God. With two parties, with two political ideologies, with even two different people, I want to say to you today that there's some things that we need to be informed about. Let me tell you some encouraging things that I see. Number one, I see that today that our president is strong pro-Israel. I, uh, I believe the scripture teaches us that as Christians, it, it is our responsibility, it is our uh, obligation that we need to hear what God has to say to the world in light of how God has blessed Israel. I'm so thankful that our president had the courage to move the embassy to Jerusalem to declare who Israel is and their sovereign rights as a nation. Many presidents have been fearful to do that literally because I think that they thought it would cost them politically. But I'm glad that President Trump has seen the ability and the courage to say we're going to stand with and we're going to stand behind the nation of Israel. Two political figures, two political parties and policies know where they fall on that. Number two, religious rights. I want to be informed about what the party and the politicians say about individual Christian rights. Are they for you and I as Christians? Are they for our rights according to the everything that we as America believe? Constitution. Wow. Uh, Israel, the Christian rights that we have today, we need to be aware of that. Are you frustrated, Pastor? Yeah. Are you fearful? Not, not so much fearful in the sense that I know that ultimately God's in control, and I'll say more about that, but at the end of the day, I do fear for what could happen for my grandchildren. They will not know the America that I grew up in, and that is so sad. And again, America has never been perfect. Don't, don't get me wrong. But at the same time, we need to know what these politicians and their parties say about Israel, what they say about Christian religious rights. You know, as your pastor now, in April will be 30 years how I've always said about abortion. I believe abortion is a crime, it's a sin, and that I can never vote for anybody knowingly who abdicates or who stands behind abortion. This is something you need to be informed about. Pray for our president. He has the ability to nominate a third Supreme Court justice. And if everything that I'm hearing, trying to be informed is right, then possibly for the first time in almost 50 years, we could have a conservative voice and, and conservative just in the sense of how they vote about Roe versus Wade. That's big to me. That Could you imagine if we were able to speak that into our country that we realize the wrong, the sin we've committed against God? And maybe now we could reverse that. That could happen. Hey, maybe, could I just say this? Maybe God put President Trump in the White House because he knew that this time would come and that he could be used by God to reverse what I believe is a long time standing, sinful, wicked policy. Wow. So I want to stay informed about that. I, I want to know what they say. What, what do these subjects mean to them? Are there other things? Yes. Is there border? Yes. Is there economy? Yes. But there's some things that just tend to float above all the others. Israel. Religious rights of Christians and abortion. I've been frustrated for a long time. I voted and I voted and I voted for things to change, but it seems like they never would. And now we stand at the door step or the, the door opportunity, the open door of maybe changing a almost 50-year-old decree, a law, 
And maybe God has brought us and this nation to this time. So, Christian friend, as best as you can, stay informed. Who do you follow? Well, I wouldn't advise you on that other than to say, I want to listen to those people that I know have some concern about those biblical values that mean much to my heart. Because when I step inside that polling booth or that voting booth as a Christian, that will be the first thing that comes to my mind. The first thing is my Christian responsibility. Paul said, remember the governing authorities? Paul said, but our citizenship ultimately is in heaven. So this year, in just a few months, just a few days really now, you're going to have the opportunity to strike a vote for those things that are important and significant from a spiritual viewpoint. Think about that. Could I encourage you to do this? Pray about that. Now let me say this. I don't think God ever... Because of these situations, I don't think the Lord is ever pleased when we're angry, we're mad. I do think there are times when we ought to have righteous indignation, yes. But it doesn't give us the right to treat people ugly or in bad ways. I heard somebody the other day say from the far, far, far left liberal policy. But listen to what they said. That if you believe the Bible to be literally true, if you literally believe the Bible, you're a threat to the LBTG community. And listen to what he said. You do not have the right to exist. Wow. Really? Never heard that before. But man, it, it seems to be thundering today that I can't have a voice. I, I can't have a, a, a conviction. But yet scripture teaches me that I'm a citizen of heaven. So therefore, I should do that. So dear Christian friend, listen to me. What, what, wherever you fall, make sure you're informed about the nation of Israel, religious rights, abortion. Here's another one, and this may be as significantly as important as this, and that is your involvement. I've heard people get so frustrated, they say, well, my vote doesn't count. Yes, it does. Your voice matters. And so therefore, if I'm going to be informed, I need to be involved. I will say this, if you don't get involved, then don't say anything about what happens. If you're going to stay at home and just throw something at the TV and fuss at the politicians and and, 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 and all of those things, let me remind you this, your voice matters. So in just a few weeks, you're going to have an opportunity to go voice your convictions. Be as informed as you can, but you must be involved. God help us deliver us from lackluster, half-hearted Christians who don't get involved. Your voice is your vote. When I vote, when I vote that's my voice on how I believe and how I feel about these significant, important things. Remember, your citizenship is in heaven. That's where my heart is. That's where my hope is. That's where my home is. But God has me here now. And why I'm here, as informed on those significant issues as I can be, my voice and my vote do matter. So do not, listen to me carefully, church, listen, do not be silent on November the third. Hey, I, I just got to church. This is Thursday afternoon. Kids of the Kingdom was letting out, and uh, I saw a car, a truck actually was going the wrong direction. All the cars were coming around from this side to, to uh, around the Family Life Center to go pick up their children. Well, here came a truck just opposite of all of them, and you could tell he, he was lost. <laughs> he was really lost, and it was real scary because I was afraid he was going to get hit, and I could tell he was an elderly gentleman, and I was at the house and so I was getting ready to come do this and so I hurried over here and I caught him he had circled the building and he was now out under the awning and he was knocking on the door of the church and I thought who in the world he he must have needed help and so I came up and I said sir you need to be careful you you, you could have really gotten hurt and I said can I help you he said yeah I'm here to vote I said sir he said I'm here to vote I said sir that doesn't take place until November the third man he was here today ready to vote. God, wake us up. Wake up America. Be informed. Be involved. My vote and my voice do matter. My citizenship is in heaven. My heart belongs to God. My hope is in Him. But while I'm here, I want to be a help to lead people to the faith and the knowledge of the Word of God. Hey, I heard a cute little story. I've told it here before. There was a United States Senator jogging in Central Park in New York. And uh, he was daily ex exercised out there and somebody began to watch him. And so somebody thought one day they would rob him. And so as he was doing his daily run, somebody came up behind him with a gun, put the gun in his back and said, stick your hands up. And he stuck his hands up. And he said, give me all of your money. 
And he said, okay, okay, I'll, I'll give you my money. But while trying to fumble for the money, he said, do you know who I am? And the guy said, no. He said, I am a United States senator. You don't even know who I am and you're robbing me. Well, it got real quiet. And finally the guy said, tell you what, don't give me your money. Won't you just give me my money? Hey, you ever feel like that, church? We might as well laugh. I want to say to you today, your voice does matter. Your boy, your vote does count. So not only am I informed, I'm involved. God helped me to do my part while I'm here on this earth. While I help to speak the voice of the Holy Spirit with Scripture and truth and in love. God today, wake up, America. Again, I pray that President Trump will be able to move this nomination to the Supreme Court, that we'll see a conservative court for the first time in almost 50 years and possibly see some significant things take place. Just one vote. By adding this one Supreme Court justice, we could change a 50-year law. So get involved, get informed. Number three, inspired. Brother Ron, why should I get involved at all? Who am I? I live in Little Sinistar, Alabama. Washington, D.C. doesn't care about me. They don't know me. They can't hear my voice. Why should I even think and or care about what's going on? Now, let me remind you, Paul speaking to the church at Rome. Paul, Paul speaking to the Christians at Philippi said, there's a government authority and it is in place there for a reason. And so let's just think about that reason for a moment. Ultimately... I want to say this with all my heart. Ultimately, even though I don't like the way some things are going, God is in control. God is in control. Do you remember what he said in that 13th chapter of Romans? Man, this is a strong word uh, even to me. Now, li listen very carefully. Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed, allowed by God, God's sovereignty. God used Pharaoh in Egypt. Can I remind you of that? God used Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel's day. God even used Herod in the Lord Jesus' day. And God can use our appointed officials today. Even those whom we disagree with, God may have a purpose and a reason for them being there. So it inspires me this, that God is in control and that one day, one day God will rule and reign. But if we lose heart, if we lose hope, if we turn our back, our, bo our voice and our boat are gone. And in some respects, a lot of hope. I'm encouraged and renewed by the fact that the Bible is still true. That's why I'm so strong against abortion. Read Jeremiah chapter 1. Read Psalms 139. Strong verses. God told Jeremiah, before you were even in your mother's womb, I knew you and I called you. That was pre-birth, preconception. It does frustrate me that some people say today that we don't have the right to speak about reproduction rights. That's what they're calling it now. Well, I want to say something. Reproduction deals with the, 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 the conception fact of man and woman coming together and creating a life. Murdering a baby has nothing to do with reproduction. Has nothing to do with individual rights unless you want to take the rights of another individual away and that's what you've done so God is in control the Bible is still true and because the Bible's true because God is still in control I want to be informed and involved but I want to be inspired and I got a word about that in a moment stay with me I want to say this even in this dark dangerous frustrating fearful time Jesus still saved and all the church said praise be to the Lamb of God I pray some of them would be saved I really do I'm not going to throw stones at them. That's not my responsibility. I'm going to love them. I'm going to pray for them. But at the same time, I want them to know that there's a God in heaven who has a plan for their life. Jesus died for the Muslim just like he did for the American. You understand that? Just because you were born in America does not mean you have a spiritual uh, right any more than anybody else born any, anywhere else in the world. I don't care if it's in darkest Africa. I don't care if it's in, in Muslim countries. America gives you no more right of passage to become a Christian than anybody else in the world. You're not any more special than anybody else in the world. All the tribes of the earth, Revelation. You remember we read it last week, chapter 5? All the tribes of the earth will see him. Everybody, red, yellow, black, and white, they are precious 
in his sight. Church, remember that. Remember that, would you? He died for everybody, not just for a few. So God is in control. The Bible is true. I love this. Jesus saves. Aren't you glad? I can go to any party, any person, political persuasion, and tell them what you believe I may disagree with, but that doesn't mean you can't be saved and give your heart and your life to Christ. The Holy Spirit is still powerful. He still moves. He still convicts, and He still can change minds and hearts. That's why I want to keep on boating and speaking out the truth in love, that God changes lives. The Holy Spirit can do that. We need to pray the Holy Spirit would have His will and way in the world in which we live today, church. Join me in your, with your voice and join me in voting, but be informed, be involved. But let's be inspired. I know it's easy to get depressed and discouraged. I, it, I've been there, but I do not want to lose hope that God's in control. The Bible's true. Jesus saved. And the Holy Spirit is still powerful enough to change hearts and lives. Hey, if I could, if I could leave you with three thoughts, I know our time is almost out. Listen to me very carefully. There, there are three things that I just felt led to say to you. Number one, remember where we came from. I truly believe had it not been for the sovereign work of God, we as America would not be here today. Do you realize that we're, we're just a little over 200 years old? I was speaking to a missionary several years ago when he was, I can't remember, Spain or Europe or somewhere. And they were doing some prayer walks where they would go out in communities and they would walk around villages and homes and they would pray over them. And one of the guys came out of his home where he was and he introduced himself and, hey, what are you guys doing? He didn't know if they were weirdos. And he said, oh, you're praying? He said, yeah. And he was very complimentary. And he began to just struck up a conversation. And he said, where are you from? And the guy said, I'm from America. I'm a Christian. I'm a believer. And I've come here to pray for your country. Well, why would you leave America to come here to pray for my country? And the guy was just sharing with him how he had a heart for the people and, and, and things of that nature. And then the guy said this, do you know that the house I live in is 350 years old? It's 100 years older than your country. Wow. Hey, guys, God's sovereign hand. Remember where we came from. We would not be here today if it were not for the help of God. And all the church said, yes. Can he, did he help us then? Yes. Can he help us today? Yes. God's in control. The Bible's true. Jesus saved and the Holy Spirit's powerful. Number two, not only do we remember where we came from, but we need to remember who we are. Listen, as Paul said, Philippians 3.20, our citizenship is in heaven. It changes everything I do, everything I believe because of who he is and because of what he's done in my life. It makes all the difference. And here's the third one and the big one. Where are we going? 10 years, 20 years, 50 years, what would this country look like? If we don't speak up today, if we don't voice our convictions today, there's no telling where the world will end up tomorrow. But we have today. Matter of fact, that's all we have is today. It's a gift of God. So I want to say to you Christians, as Christian citizens, as American citizens, God's give us this hour. I pray that God would bless our president, that he would lead him in some of these pivotal nominations that could change the way we as a country look at ideas and things of the future. But we need to be involved today. Where are we going, church? Where is this world going? Where, where is our country headed? If we don't begin to speak up and speak out as born again children of the living God. Paul the apostle says, our God is in heaven, is in control. And without him, no one would be an authority that is an authority. So let's trust him. Would you do that? He's able. When David faced Goliath, it looked improbable, didn't it? it looked impossible. When Joshua looked at the inhabitants of Canaan, it looked impossible. When Daniel walked into the lion's den, it looked impossible. When Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were bound, thrown into the fire, it looked impossible. And with 11 men in Acts chapter 1 and Acts chapter 2, Jesus said, go you into all the world. It looked impossible. But 2,000 years later, we see how the hand of God has gone all over the world. So church today, 
uh, again, I'm not trying to be divisive, but I do think as a pastor, as a preacher of the gospel, we need to be true to the word. And as Christians, we need to be true to our faith. Paul said, you're a citizen of heaven. It ought to change how you think, how you feel, and what you do. Where'd we come from? Where are we? Where are we going? Well, that will be determined. In just a few weeks, you'll go to the poll, and your voice will become a vote. Do not neglect that great privilege, for many do not have it. In Jesus' name, and all the church said, amen. Hey, guys, we love you. We're praying for you. Hey, remind you that in the days ahead, we will consider and relook and reevaluate where we are. And uh, all of our decisions will be made based off of where we are with the actual cases and, and how things are going in the state. We saw what Governor Ivey said on Wednesday. Uh, she's going to continue the mask mandate. And so uh, we, we'll do the best we can to make our, our decisions off of those very crucial, important things. Okay? Big days coming up ahead. Let's be informed. Let's be involved. Hey, get inspired. We can make a difference. He can. He will. Where'd we come from? Where are we at? We better wake up. Because we certainly don't know where we're going if we're not careful. By God's hand. Love you. Bless you. Look forward to seeing you. Join us Wednesday night, 630. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you.